All right. So we're still we're still in the art and science of selling in healthcare. And you know, we went we went high, broad, then we got into the weeds, and now I'm gonna come out, I don't know, about halfway up in this new patient call, right? So I guess we could call this more implementation and and application and doing, right? For the art and science of selling. And we probably have two or three more episodes and then I'll move on to something else. But I think these last, what, one, two, three, four, including this five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine episodes is really, um, <laughs> shit. This is 20 years of work in nine episodes, right? In freaking what, in a couple hours worth of stuff. So, and you have it all, all right here. And, um, if you've been following along or you're just catching up now and you start at the beginning, you have 20 years of work in nine episodes. This episode today, this sell the journey, not the outcome. This, this came together probably over the last couple of years. And I'll tell you where it came from. We love, we, we love to simplify. We love to oversimplify. Sorry. Let, let, let's say oversimplify. And if we don't over, if we don't truly understand something, we love to make it as simple as possible, which I guess makes it digestible and we can start to process in our brain. Yet, if we don't come back out and go, what does this really mean? And look at the, the complex side of it, because everything simple has a complex side to it. I'll say that broadly. And if we don't come back out at some point and look at what it means in the bigger context, how about that? We don't come back out and look at what it means in the bigger context, then, then we start to make mistakes. And this selling the outcome is one of them. And I see it shared frequently. And I've seen some of the original um, sharing of it. And it's definitely a mindset you got to get into. It's the, uh, by the way, one of the other things, sell the sizzle, not the steak, right? That's been coming up a lot in a business course I'm taking currently. And it's true. And this is kind of the same thing. We sell the outcome, right? Not the treatments, not the services, right? We sell the outcome. What is this desired outcome they want? And this is really important until we understand that everybody's doing it. So yes, we need to do it, but it's not the end all be all because everybody's doing it. And I see people constantly coming into discussions and groups and someone will say something about getting people scheduled or getting people to stay on schedule. And they're like, you got to sell the outcome. And I'm like, you're not wrong, but boy, is it, is it bigger than that? Right. Again, we got to come back and look about how it fits in the bigger picture. And that's what I want to talk about today. And what I realized uh, over time is everybody's selling the outcome. Everybody, right. Someone calls you for back pain. Everybody's selling the solution to back pain your outcome, Cairo, massage, personal trainers, acupuncturists, everybody, Pilates, there's more, doctors. Um, by the way, the biggest seller of outcomes for back pain are the TV commercials, the stuff you can buy over the counter, right? They're selling an outcome, right? And they're selling, right? They're selling an outcome and a quick fix to that outcome, which is part of this story I want to share today. So if you just sell the outcome, hey, we can get you better. You can't differentiate yourself. If you sell the outcome based on the treatments and services you do, then you're commoditizing your outcome, just like the people on TV. That is really, really important takeaway here. Well, but I get people outcomes differently. I'm like, no, you don't. Right. So here's the differentiator for you. And here's your takeaway for today. And you must think about, right, this in the bigger picture and take a step back and go, yes, we're going to sell the outcome, dot, 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 here it is, in the context of their journey with us. We are going to sell their outcome in the context of their journey with us. So now selling the outcome just becomes a step in a process, not the sell, right? And this is why I put together that five point, five phase list to follow. And if you look at it, it's exactly what you're doing. And what's the first thing we do? We get the problem they want solved. So we get the outcome they want. So don't get me wrong. Again, it's a step in a process and it is important as hell 
Yet, if you in there, you're a commodity. Because what everybody does, once they find out the outcome they want, everybody starts to spew how our business can get you that outcome without moving forward. And you and I both know there are three more, four more steps, three more steps in this sales process. But we all stop and we try to close after we get their outcome. Well, I can help you get that. Let me tell you how. And we spew out all this stuff and it's treatments and it's services that have a cost associated and that they will compare that cost with other uh, providers who can get them the same outcome with said treatments and services. We sell the outcome, right? And our role in their journey to get that outcome. The treatments and services aren't, they can bring them up, but we're going to put them into the journey under the guise of the expertise. So we've got a couple different topics that are overlapping here, but I don't want to go too deep into the second one, which is people will pay for an expert to take them along a journey back to their outcome. That one phrase probably sums up the last 20 years of work. We know people are looking for an expert. By the way, here, here's a kicker. They're not looking for an expert to deliver a service or treatment. They're looking for an expert to come alongside them on their journey back to the outcome they desire. So again, when I do the secret callers, when I listen to the calls, people get really excited when they hear the outcome people want, and then they spew the services they offer. They spew the treatments. They spew the reason why they're different. And they rarely ever mention the provider in their expertise. They talk real general and I call it a game of Russian roulette or flipping a coin or no different than roulette. Actually, if I just throw everything at them, maybe something will stick. And I'm like, wow, what a strategy, right? What's the next step after we get the problem they want solved? We ask them their expectations of which they will then tell us what they want and need from you. So there is no roulette here. Instead of throwing everything at the wall, I say, just ask them. And it's really interesting to work with some of these clinics who are so dialed into, right? Why well, just share with them what we offer? And I'm like, but why should they buy what you offer? Because we help people with low back pain. I'm like, everybody does. So you didn't create any certainty. You didn't decrease any fear or doubt uh, over your clinic, over the last one they called or over any solution they're looking for because we haven't spoken directly to that journey and how we're going to move them through to that outcome. Ooh, there we go. So I always say, save that. You have all these services, you have all these treatments, right? Okay. Just tell everybody we do this. I'm like, only after you find out the problem to be solved and in the context that that expert will deliver those treatments and services because we tie the expert, you guys have heard this, back to their problem. And then what do we sell at the very end of this? You guys remember this, right? What do we do? We go acknowledge, we get the problem to be solved, we get their expectations, which I cannot emphasize enough. Then we move on to what? Step three, we sell the expert who will do what? Deliver a plan of care. The plan of care is the map, is the roadmap, is the outline of their journey back to their outcomes. So when I say you're selling the journey, you're saying we've helped people just like you. We have people just like you in the clinic. Your expert, Dr. Jane Doe, has helped people get back to the gym pain-free. And it's helped them to get out of morning pain just like you. Cool. That's just team up. We're not done yet. We then don't tell them the treatments and services because John, Dr. Jane Doe is the expert. So what we do is we move forward to the next step and we put the next step into their head and we create the vision around the deliverables and the product of the first step. And this is what starts their journey, but check this out. We make sure they know ultimately at the end of that day, at the end of the step, they're going to know more of their journey based on what? The findings of the expert. 
if you take this one episode and you fucking start doing this tomorrow, you will see huge change. We sell the journey, not the outcome. And again, I just showed you how the outcome is a step in this process to then sell the journey. People want an expert who will give them a plan. It's in the research. Then we also know in the research, people want to know the problem. What is my problem? What's keeping me from doing this? Well, guess what? One of the deliverables is for the evaluation. Your expert will help get to the source of your problem, will help you to better understand that problem. So again, we're setting up the next step in the journey to deliver not only the things they want now, but the future, the plan of care. This one right here in this amount of time will deliver you more new patients who arrive, pay, and then stay. This is where the stay comes from, my friends. Yes, it puts people on the schedule, but man, if nobody has fully understood how the front desk delivers people who will stay, this is it. They figure out the problem to be solved. They talk about the expectations. They sell the expert who will take this person on the journey. And not only that, so we don't just say it's a journey here, right? I'm going to get you scheduled out for 12 visits. No, I'm going to put you in touch with the expert who will define your problem. They want that, who will then show you your journey, right? So now again, we're really overlapping with selling the expert versus the commodity. And I'm probably going to cut that podcast out. I had it typed into my list to do here pretty quick. But now that you're here and we're selling the journey versus the outcome, you're also hearing, I want you to reflect on and listen back, how to sell an expert versus a commodity. Hi, my name's Jerry. I have low back pain. I'm wondering if you guys do dry needling. Well, hello, Jerry. So sorry to hear you have low back pain, but I'm really glad you called us here at ABC Physiotherapy. By the way, we do have dry needling and it's done under the care of our experts. Now, can I learn a little bit more about you and what problems you're looking to solve so I can get you set up with the right expert? You like how I flipped that commodity conversation into an expert conversation in seconds. There's your selling the expert versus the commodity. And then we go into the same thing. Then we sell the journey, not the outcome. Woo. This is good shit. I'm putting a big fucking asterisk next to this. By the way, I have to say the F word, so I keep the E's going. I think there are a couple episodes where I don't curse, by the way, and they still drop the E in there, and I think they just do it preemptively. But this is the stuff that gets me excited. That's why I curse, by the way. It's huge. This is huge. Go back and roll this back for your front desk team. Go back and roll this back for your providers. Because I'll tell you what, the providers have to know what expectation is being set. But there is no provider that will hear this episode that won't go, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm like, we finally are connecting it. This is why I say the work done with your providers. The work is done with your providers. The providers are doing the work. I'll go on record right now. We're not setting them up for success with this work. Awesome, my friends. Thanks for coming along. I'm going to highly recommend you share this with your team, with your front desk team, with your clinic manager, with all those other people, because this is really the kicker right here. And this is really how that arrive pay. Okay. 